In art, we created clay bells. Bells have three main parts. The chamber, where the sound resonates. The handle and the clapper that makes the sound. Mrs. Rocket showed us how to shape our bell, starting with a ball of clay and opening it into a pinch pot. We used our fingers to feel the thickness of the clay and to try to keep the pinch pot even all the way around. We think that affects the sound quality. The kind of clay might affect that too. Mrs. Rocket and Mrs. Pecco are learning along with us. Then we turned the pinch pot over and it became the bell chamber. We got to design a handle that felt good for our hand. That's called an ergonomic design. We attached the handle to the bell chamber using the scratch and score technique and made sure it was on tight. It took two weeks for the bell to dry out before they could be bisque fired. The kiln got really hot, almost 2,000 degrees, and changes the clay into ceramic. It's really hard but still breakable. Mrs. Brockett challenged us to glaze our bells in a way that was personal and important to us. That was fun. Then the bells were ready for the second firing, the glaze firing. The best part is seeing your bell when it comes out of the glaze firing. You never really know exactly how it will look. That's the cool surprise. We used wire and metal washers to create the sound clapper for our bells. We listened to the sound and attached our clapper at the height where we thought the sound was best. Now our bells are ready to make beautiful music together. Before we started using our bells to create music, we did some listening. We heard the music of India, Egypt, Japan, and Indonesia. Mrs. Pecco explained that many different scales are used to make music all over the world. When we played our bells in music class, we discovered that their sound was totally unique. We couldn't even find some of our pitches on the piano. That's because there are actually pitches in between the keys on the piano. Using those pitches makes the interesting sounding scales that we heard in Asian music. We started our composing project by organizing our bells into scales. We compared their sounds and put the pitches in ascending order. If you mix up the order of your pitches, you get a melody. When you find two or more pitches that sound good together, it's a chord. Of all of the Asian music we heard, our classroom instruments seemed most like the Indonesian orchestra. It's called the gamelan. We began our own gamelan by improvising rhythms on the drums. Then we improvised melodies on xylophones that were set up with an Asian sounding scale. We found that layering melodies and rhythms over each other makes very interesting music. Our task was to plan and rehearse a piece of music with at least two different sections. It had to combine the ideas of all the members of the group, use musical elements we'd been practicing, and it had to sound good too. That was a big challenge. Miss Pecco arranged for us to have musical mentors from the Pinckney High School Band to help us. They gave us encouragement and suggestions as we experimented with so many musical possibilities. Our mentors made sure we stayed on track so we could perform our compositions for the class. We stormed ideas on how we could put little groups together, performances, and through the weeks it kind of morphed into this project that became kids being a conductor and kids composing and kids making all their own music, doing their own thing. And it all started with a ball of clay. 